So what's the similarity between 2001 A Space Odyssey and Halo? Well, apart from being in space and some other very obvious ones, they both rely on gravity rings. The Halo is a giant one, and Discovery 1, which is in 2001 A Space Odyssey, spins a centrifuge, which is a band off their deck. So what are these doing? Well, have you ever been so fast on a roundabout you felt yourself being pushed away from it? Or even one of those fairground rides that spin you around really quickly and you get pinned to the walls? If you have, then you've experienced the concept behind a, albeit very strong, gravity ring. Imagine looking down on a swing ball set, with the ball going round and round. If I cut the string, the ball wouldn't continue going round in a circle, it would fly off in a straight line. In that case, the string is playing the part of something called centripetal force. It's a force towards the centre, in this case, which is the top. This is what makes things follow a curved path. Now, centrifugal force acts in the opposite direction, and some would debate it's not actually a force. If you're the ball and your string gets cut, you want to fly off in a straight line, but if you're in a container that is still going round the curved path, which which in this case would be our car or our fairground ride, then you can't go straight and you feel like you're being forced into the container. But how does that kind of relate to a gravity ring? Well, if you're in space in a nice sealed environment like a spacecraft and you started spinning your environment, you'd feel yourself being pushed to the outer walls. If we make a spacecraft a big ring and spin it around at just the right speed, we can make that force the same strength as gravity on Earth. The weird thing is that if we dropped something, it wouldn't go straight down. It would fall kind of in a diagonal line. That's because gravity is varying in strength from the inside to the outside of the ring. So trying to put this into perspective, your feet are the furthest point from the center of that ring. And your head would be closest to the center. And as the whole environment around you is going the same speed, you wouldn't feel like you were spinning. All you would feel is something like gravity, but it's acting at different levels, different strengths at different parts of the body. The rate at which you would need to spin this ring to feel the gravitational force or fake gravity is dependent on the size of the ring. Larger rings can spin slower and luckily as well scientists have looked into what materials we would need to build such a structure and steel surprisingly is easily capable so we don't need to worry about that. And in terms of cost, well, let's not delve too much into cost, and we can assume it's going to be expensive when we build our first interstellar craft. Now I've somewhat haphazardly described how it works, you may be wondering why we even bothered doing this in the first place. Well, our bodies are used to gravity, and every part of us, even our blood, is being acted upon by gravity and being pulled to the floor. If we take that gravity away, the blood doesn't struggle to get pumped to your head, and so you get a puffy face. All the blood's like, oh, I can go there now, isn't this fun? The blood hasn't appeared from nowhere, though. It's likely to have come from your legs, where gravity was pulling your blood to earlier. So now you have skinny legs. This is kind of what happens when you see someone come back from the space station. They might have slightly puffy face and skinny legs. You'll also notice as nothing weighs anything, you don't have to put much effort into moving, so your muscles are going to start getting weaker. And we want gravity to stay strong so we don't have to look like puffy people. These are the areas of space operation that need gravity. For now, we can just imagine cruising through space on our giant fairground ride. Let us know in the comments what you think you'd need gravity for in space. And please don't forget to subscribe.